Hi, uh, my name is Aaron and I was asked to do a video on horse care. Uh, I felt fitting that I should go over the feet because I am a farrier. Uh, so today we're in a little lean-to here and we got two horses. We got Macho who's a little weanling and then we got this yearling here, Mandy. So they're due for a trim so I'm just going to kind of go through uh, how to trim a foot and how to properly pick it up, kind of what to look for when you pick them out before you ride and then some of the tools I use and how I go about trimming the foot. So to start off, the biggest thing that I want to get across today is the proper way to pick a foot up. So you can do it every time, whether you're competing and you have to show picking your feet up, horse's feet out, or just pick them up in general, how to safely do that. So the first thing I do is I want to make sure the horse knows me, just kind of pet along the neck, and obviously she's kind of comfortable. She's a little nervous, uh, but she's still real comfortable. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of stand right next to the horse here, and I'm going to make sure my feet are under me. I don't want to be crossed over underneath her or leaning on her. I just want my feet underneath me in a good stance. Then I'm gonna run my hand down, and I want it that when I get to about, about here, their whole horse, their weight shifts to the other foot. So I can run my hand down here, and she picks that up for me. Now the second thing I wanna really get across is you wanna keep this foot in the range of motion of the foot. If I bring it out here, she doesn't like that. She's getting uncomfortable, she started leaning towards me. If I push it in here, well then I can't pick it out. And the same thing, she leans the other way. So I want to keep it right here in the range of motion, right down here, so I'm just going with all the joints and there's no tension anywhere. So the first thing I do when I pick a foot up is I'm going to pick it out, so with a hook pick or I like to use my hook knife. So I just pick the foot out, make sure it's nice and clean, and I just like to do a nice visual exam. Uh, I want to make sure there's no holes, there's no blood, there's no nothing that's out of the ordinary. As you can see, this foot, although it's very long, it is, uh, it is a healthy foot. There's no uh, abscess holes, and there's no, nothing I'm really concerned about. So now I'm gonna kinda go about and trim this foot. So as a fairy, I put it between my legs like this, and I'm gonna take my hoof knife, and I'm just gonna kinda scrape the, scrape the dead or an ex exfoliating uh, sole off. And then I'm gonna clean the frog up a bit. And since this horse is barefoot, it will be barefoot all year, I'm not gonna take much off because she needs some of that protection. Next thing I do, now that I got that cleaned up and I got a path for my nippers, I'll take my nippers and I'll kind of come up and once again, clip off any access hoof wall. And with this particular horse, I only need to take that much off. You can see I didn't nip the whole entire foot. I just took a little bit off. She's gonna move around and that's just fine. She's wrapped around very lightly on the post up there so she can move a bit. Next I'm gonna take my rasp and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna look down this foot here. And what I can see is that I gotta, I gotta take a lot more off this side to make sure that we have a good even and flat foot. do a little sole relief. She's wanting to move around and I'm okay with that. She's, like I said, she's just a yearling. Uh, and, and we're doing it a little different because no one's holding her today. She's just having to stand for me. So I'm gonna keep sighting this foot. And you can see what I just saw there is I got a nice flat foot. So that's the tr basic trim from the bottom. And I can look up at the angle of the foot and it's right where I want it to be, uh, matching, matching the bone alignment. So now the next thing I'll do is dress the foot, which is bring it forward, and kind of just take any flare off, any edges. So I'll take my hoof stand here, and I'll bring it forward. And once again, when you bring the horse's foot forward, it has to be in the natural alignment for the horse. So I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna run my hand down, my feet are in my own path. I'm gonna kind of take this, get her head out of the way. And I'm gonna make sure it comes straight forward with her alignment. Now you can see it's kind of tipped in, but her confirmation kind of brings her in just a little bit. Good girl. She's being a little goofy, which is fine.
just going to go ahead and get this foot dressed nicely. She's moving around just a little bit more than I would like, but I'm still been able to get the job that I like to get done done, and she's standing pretty good for it. There we go. So now we got that foot trimmed. And a few things to look for when you're picking the horse's feet up is some abscess holes or any debris that's in there, anything that's kind of caught, just to make sure that all that's out so they're real comfortable. My name is Leah, I'm from Anoka County, and today I'm going to teach you safe ways to deworm your horse. So first of all, there are many different types of dewormer. There's daily dewormer programs, there's stuff you can put in the grain, there's even tubes that you can put down your horse's throat, but the most common one that I've seen use is just the deworming paste. So here we have baby Macho. He is about six months old, and the difference between deworming a horse and a baby is that a baby is way more prone to worms. So we need to deworm him about twice as often as you would deworm a regular horse. A regular horse, you can deworm every two months and you'll go back and forth between different types of dewormer. That is something you should consult with your veterinarian, what types of dewormer to go back and forth. I personally use ivermectin and pyrantal pamoate paste. But Macho needs to be wormed every month so that he doesn't have an overgrowth of worms. So the first thing you're gonna do is you'll take your deworming paste out of the package and then you'll take the cap off. And then every deworming paste has a crank scale here and you'll kind of crank the piece so that it goes to your horse's weight so that you don't overdose or underdose your horse so that they can get the appropriate amount of deworming paste that you need. So not really sure how Macho's gonna behave here, but deworming you, you always wanna do on the left side of the horse so your horse is comfortable with you. And you really, what you wanna do, get in position, stick it in the upper corner of your horse's face. I kinda hold onto the halter and then just push it in. And you see how I pushed it in really far up. Now I'm gonna hold his head up for a couple seconds just to make sure that he swallows it and he doesn't spit it back out. So he's kinda licking and chewing, doing the little nose thing. It's okay if you get some of this on your horse's face. It's just the way it is. It kind of looks like lipstick. And that is how you deworm a horse. My name is Leah. This is Macho here in the background. And we are from Anoka County. And today we just want to talk about a little bit about what are vaccines, what are the different types of vaccines, and kind of just how they work. So first of all, what is a vaccine? A vaccine is a substance used to stimulate the production of antibodies and provide immunity against a certain disease without causing a clinical illness. So the goal of a vaccine is long-term protection from an illness. There are two different types of vaccines. There are core vaccines and risk-based vaccines. Core vaccines are the vaccines recommended by the American Association of Equine Practitioners to be administered to your horse once or twice yearly. And that is because the following diseases that I'm going to name, which those vaccines are for, can be caught whether you are just sitting in a pasture or whether you are on the show circuit. So the core vaccines are for tetanus, eastern encephalitis, western encephalitis, west nile virus, and rabies virus. Moving on to the risk-based vaccines. Risk-based vaccines are vaccines for diseases that are specific to your location, exposing vectors, or just your lifestyle. So some vaccines included in that are anthrax, botulism, strangles, equine influenza, and equine herpes virus. Just to give a little bit deeper on, just to dig a little bit deeper on it, what is lifestyle, what is exposing vectors. Here in Minnesota, we don't really have to worry about our horse getting a snake bite as much as someone in Texas might. Or if you have a horse that just sits in the pasture and horses around it are not coming in and out, then you don't really have to worry about vaccinating for a really contagious disease such as strangles or equine influenza.